This is Victor, and Victor is an entrepreneur who has many years' experience buying lands, selling lands, building houses, and more. And in this video, we are going to have a very honest conversation on building or buying a house. Yeah, my name is Victor from Build Trust. I've been in the real estate space for quite some time. Not always in the country, but I'm in touch with the real estate space, and get acquiring lands, building properties, and dealing with the not so nice uh, aspects of real estate. What are some of the not so nice aspects of real estate, and especially when it comes to building a house as a young person in Ghana? We all know that land issues in Ghana are nothing new, and that um, you have to deal with issues of multiple cities land guards litigation is a major problem but with time i found a way to navigate these muddy waters uh, you always have to smell the scent of the land quote unquote you need to do some background research whenever you're buying land it's not just about this uh, like the official search but you need to ask people around the location you are interested in even if the people around the area know you, send someone else. Let them do the background checks for you. Ask around, what's the grapevine information? Like in terms of who is this property for, who has been coming around, what's the history of this land? Things like that, you can get it from people who stay close to the place. And it's not always that it's about the official document because you can do your search. It will let you know maybe X or Y person is the owner of the land but sometimes you start building and these guys come from nowhere the land guards some from maybe family members of the same family who basically fighting for their own pound of flesh because when the land was sold they didn't get their share and i've had the unpleasant experience of being in places that i wish for no one because again i had uh, i bought a, a piece of land uh, half of that land was stolen from me and to be able to protect the remaining half i had to go and dine with langas in the den. how was half of the land stolen from you i'll take a step back that's 2017 and then I see a piece of land. I'm interested in it, but I'm like, okay, the place is still bushy, so let me just give it some time. Then a few months later, I decided to say, okay, finally, let me get this uh, one plot. Which part of Ghana was this? Uh, this is around uh, Adoba, or older Shaman, you may say, right? And so I got this piece of land, paid, made half payments, and then I said, oh, let me at least put something or let me just protect the land or something else but i was still hesitant like and when i went to the land i saw some foundation like broken foundation like as if someone wanted to start foundation and i asked you send something and you ask you don't get the right answers from the people they gave me a different story as to why the foundation was was there it's not just a, even a complete foundation it's just like a couple of blocks i decided that, okay let me come back after some time so i came back after some time and i realized that someone had divided the land and built foundation on one side in fact they had flowed their foundation and i, I was alarmed so i went back to the guy who sold me the land uh, he pretended as if he didn't know anything was going on he came to the site and one of the land guys also approached and this land guy i'm mean, threatening to beat the hell out of me if i didn't leave the land so Luckily for me, I used to work with a guy who used to go to gym with these land guys. And I called him up and he told me that, oh, he knows them. So he went to discuss the issue behind the scenes, like, and they realized that, no, they explained to me what happened. So this is a transaction gone wrong between the owner of the land and the land guys. However, they will not go and attack the owner. They will attack you. So you, the innocent person acquiring the land, becomes the victim. So if you want peace you have to forget about what you have paid and just focus on resolving because there's one thing about land when your money goes it doesn't come back people don't know this that's the realistic truth what about like seeking legal time is very expensive money is also very expensive but your time you can never get back by going to the court and following up on the legal processes it's going to take you a minimum of about two years to get a resolution within that two years whilst you're in court that your land would have been built upon no, but there'll be like a, an injunction. Well, I've, I've had cases where there's an injunction on the land, 
are people still built? They build in the middle of the night. It's world. You don't see anything, but before you realize they are, floating, they are doing a, a, a floor on the first floor. So look, based on what I've seen, anything that involves squats, try as much as possible to avoid it. Unless you are one of those people that quote unquote, open mouth so change, show that you are right and you want to fight for a right. If you know that you are not that strong, always chart the path of least resistance. So if I'll go and spend about 50,000 over this case in court by paying lawyers and what have you, and that same 50,000, I can use to settle these guys and have my freedom, I'd rather do it. Because at the end of the day, even if the court pronounces some charges on them, like they have to pay so, some uh, fines and what have you, they will not get the money for you. Because these guys, like they have this saying that when you see car in area, so when they get the money, like immediately you buy the land, like the next day the money is gone you know it only takes grace of god sometimes for you to get even part of your money back so it's like the lions then when food goes there it doesn't come back you know you need to be realistic i like to take things from a realistic angle based on what i've seen yes people have much more experience than i do right i have seen a little bit or enough to know uh, what I won't fight over. So talking about experience, how long have you been involved in the real estate sector? And then what also gave you the interest? How did you start? So myself, like initially, I went to KNUST to do civil engineering. I really didn't, I thought the course was boring. No offense, but I, uh, and then, but my brother's an architect. I always used to um, go to sites, take pictures for him, send it to him, because he was he's not based in Ghana. So he always sends me to go and take pictures for him. And I've always been a technical person. I love technical drawing, technical skills as well. So, I mean, I took it from that point. And then my mom was always encouraging us to, at least when we get some money, just buy some plot of land. No matter how far it is, just start something, that kind of thing. I mean, so it's made all of us like this whole real estate thing. Yes, we all made a lot of mistakes in the beginning because we didn't have much information. And by working with people, learning their language, like the way they go about things, you know which deals you should run away from, which deals you should stick and stay. So what was the first time you actually bought and negotiated for a parcel of land? Yeah, that was 2017. 2017. 2017, I bought uh, one plot of land at Kwabina. I bought it from my brother's wife, from one plot of land. But then I had to deal with the landowners to do the papers. About uh, that process you bought it from your brother's wife was it registered in her name no no, no it wasn't registered in it, so i had to go back to the family to do the paperwork and all that i mean it was a, a little bit of stress you go to land's commission to register i like to avoid that <laughs> aspect you know i mean but yeah i mean in ghana i always say that always find an easier way to do things don't try to do don't be don't try to be captain planet or uh, you know you can't be the hero from beginning to end and these are unofficial things but you need to understand the system to have peace of mind so some things you let those who eat breathe and sleep that kind of job handle it and then you just pay for the services and then you get it done okay so 2017 you bought your first plot of yes i put up a building on it even in that same 2017 that's when i went to get this other plot of land as well and then um i lost half of it so the remaining half after i settled the land guys i, I put up a foundation and i had a plan so i sold the concept of my plan to a friend and he liked it so he he tagged me to build the entire um uh, it was like two so basically it's like two bedrooms semi-detached on a half plot of land i mean so that's like two two but all on the half plot of land and there was still enough space based on the way we did the design and so like i put up the entire building for him i sold it with the foundation right so I took the money I sold the foundation and I went to buy two plots of land so basically that's the flipping when if you are interested in real estate business you don't sell when you buy land and maybe you get your documents and you want to flip it you don't like when you flip it and make a profit that's not the time for you to consume the profit you need to reinvest the money in acquiring more and then you can keep flipping like compounding interest so that's what I did I took that and bought two plots and then I sold one and I used and I also built on one right so and and I've helped many people to acquire lands uh, in and around like Accra. Okay, so on that note, what are some of the things that somebody who wants to buy land, let's say the person is starting now, the person just graduated yeah. from tertiary, yeah. completed their national service, they started yeah. some job B in the bank, maybe contract where they are being paid 2000 to 4000 mm -hmm. a month. They want to purchase land. Mm -hmm. What should they look out for when purchasing land? 
what do you look out for today if you want to purchase them based on everything that you've learned? So I'll start with the not so obvious, uh, uh, I mean, the basic things, right? The location. What I'm to say is a bit controversial. You know, like every time it rains, like Kaswa, it's a lot of flooding and what have you, right? Because it's a lowland. So sometimes you need to understand the dynamics of the area you are buying. And if it sounds too good to be true, then there's a catch somewhere that some people have realized and stayed back. And there's this funny advice that always buy land in the rainy season. Or at least go and watch the land when it's raining because you know the issues with the land. There are two types of search. You have the quick search or the window search. So when you get in the day. And then you have the official search, which can take up to a month sometimes. If you are not in a hurry, you should do both. So if you do the, the window search and nothing comes up, like everything is clean and clear, fine, that's a good sign. But if you are not so sure, you should just do the original one. Even after doing just the quick search, you should then, like I said, ask around. Sometimes people don't like it, but when you go to an area, ask the people that you are looking for the land guards. No, but what if where you are going to is just like bushes? Who are you? Going to ask. Yeah, especially like the Dodo stretch. Exactly. Like right now, mm -hmm. where you can get affordable land mm -hmm. is at the outskirts of town. Yes. So after Sawam, Dodo Waf, Takaswa, and mm -hmm. all those places, right? I'll tell you a funny story. So I know someone in, uh, in uh, who was born in Sawam, raised in Sawam, and he decided to buy land and build in Sawam. And he built it up to the floor, the, the first floor, and someone came in and said, Look, this land is my land. And you have no right to build it. The guy actually waited for him to get that far. Uh, and because again, there was no way, like some of those lands, like it's very, very difficult, right? And the fact that it's an estate selling it to you doesn't mean that the land is genuine. That's what people should always note. Even if it's a registered company selling the land to you, you don't know their history. Some of them, they are just fronting and they've not even paid for the land, you know? And sometimes when they even take the money up front, they pocket it. They don't go and pay the actual owners. And all these things to like litigate. So here's what I always say. When you're buying the land and you do your search and everything is confirmed, the next thing, like I said, like you go around and ask people. But if there's nobody around, here's a trick we normally use. The land that they claim that it's for you or they want to sell it to you, you can go and pour, like people, people don't like to do this, but it's about smelling the scent of the land, literally. You go and put some maybe some uh, one trip of sand or stone or let's say some blocks. If there's a problem there, someone up here. Exactly. No, just like the way sugar attracts ants, like they would really, really appear. And then you would know all the history and the do's and don'ts. So it's one of the tricks on the right. And then sometimes too, whoever is selling the land to you, like I always say, if the person is putting too much pressure on you, please take a step back. So never be forced. Like don't be under yes. pressure, under duress, mm -hmm. to make payments quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are all red flags. Mm -hmm. And always bear in mind that whatever money you are exchanging for a piece of land, when that money goes, forget what any lawyer will tell you in this country. Your money isn't coming back. And even if it's going to come back, no, I'm going to say we'll see Kanama, like, it's going to be, and you know, if someone is owing you, right, and you take the person to court, the person can tell the court how they can pay. You, you, you get what I'm saying? You can't actually force them. I mean, people may say, I'm ignorant, the laws of Ghana work. Yes, nobody has said the laws of Ghana don't work. But you, as a busy individual, you, you all the time you spend chasing this issue up, it's also a loss of money for you. Have you sat down to quantify it? Sometimes, intentionally delay the process just to see how it's going to like uh, evolve and things like that. Yes, they, they'll tell you that, oh, the price of land change every day. It's true. No doubt about it. Today you go, the price is like 10,000. Tomorrow it's 12,000. But again, it is better that way than to lose your entire 10,000. There's also another type of document. So for any area, there's the master plan where it shows the demarcation of the roads and all of that. If possible, you should also try to see that document. So how would somebody get the master plan? You have to go to Lands Commission. Lands Commission, Town Country Planning Day, but they don't really have balance commission they should for instance if you're buying in, in Sawam those places are in the eastern region so you go to Kofiridia right if you're buying in Accra you have to go to the Accra lands commission and all of you so in, in places like eastern region right they don't have like land title it's just registration yeah Accra you have registration and land title so in Accra you have some lands around some places I don't want to mention that the land is registered in a different person's name, but the land title is also in another person's name. How is that possible? 
you and I, as we sit here, I don't know how, but <laughs> everything is possible here. You understand? And please, an indenture is just a piece of paper. A friend of mine says something. Only start buying land when you know you are ready to at least put up foundation. Accra land, you don't buy it and watch it. Once you do all your checks, everything is right. You buy, start building, at least do your foundation. It, it gives you a certain level of security. I mean, after running all your checks and all that, because sometimes you may be in the right, but because they feel you are weak, you are not ready to build. They'll let someone bypass you. Come and build. Worst case now, it's okay. The person will try and refund some of your money to you. They'll give you another land somewhere. Somewhere. You know, they play that trick all the time. So, yeah. You mentioned that if you acquire the land, you should at least build a foundation. At least. But some people feel that, okay, let me put up a wall instead. What, what are your thoughts okay. on that? I've seen some like that before. I'll give my own experience. When I bought my two plots of land, I said, oh, let me do a wall on it, right? Someone actually came and broke the gate of the wall and was trying to build in the plot. And got them arrested right but that issue like the, it's gone away however immediately after that i was advised that look put something on land what you use to build a wall unless your goal is to sell the land maybe you are buying it as an investment to resell what you would use for the wall please use it for the, the building instead like no no matter what it can do even if it is a single room or whatever it is as a boy's quarters just i mean do your foundation do something when right our gates a proper gate is like seven thousand eight thousand and to do a wall over a plot of land right now would not cost you less than fifty thousand don't cost less than that yeah that fifty thousand plus the wall yeah you can do your foundation yeah you spoke about land guards right what has been your experience of land guards how have you dealt with them there's one thing i've realized with land guards you don't have to be weak but you should know when to back off okay explain if they meet you you also need to like man up what if you're a woman i think that the woman should rather play it the smart way let me talk about the men then i'll come to the woman as a man right you need to show them that like you're not really like afraid of them or something but like you're willing to talk and you want an amicable solution the half plot i own that i sold to my friend what we did was that we changed um 10 10 cd notes like a lot these guys were just coming every day what is that if we give them big money up front they'll still come the next day so instead we changed it into 10 10 cd notes so we had the budget for settling land guards wow like you must add the budget for yes. settling land guards as part of your building exactly project. that's just ridiculous why can't you get police yes. to come and arrest them are you ready to pay the police to come <laughs> That's also like settling the land guards. Eh? <laughs> but the police are supposed to do their work now. You see, this like is Ghana. I, I said I'm a realist. The police, they are busy. I'm a realist. If, if everybody with an issue comes to call the police, when you get to the police station, there'll be no police. So you have to be a realist. Always choose the path of least resistance. If this guy giving me problems, I can give him 20 CDs a day whilst I'm building and he will not disturb me. 20 CDs a day. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying an assumption, right? And he will not disturb my peace. I'd rather have that. Because even if I go and take the police officer, he cannot come all the time. So it's better I deal with my situation as it is. And yeah, you need to have that budget. Some places, they are lacking you don't have land guards um uh, land guard issues it's fine they make you pay some security fee something aside the land guard you know there's digging fee sometimes yeah they take the digging fee and then even after that you will know, come and pass with the emotion like oh chairman nothing for the boys today just give them some 50 ghana no 100 ghana Charlie, look it's not worth the stress it's not worth the stress so you are ready especially with land at least have money for your foundation so at least do not not even to flow the foundation but just to raise the blocks and, and uh -huh, so that they know that you are working wherever it comes so when you settle the guys at that very um beginning stage but become your friends with the land guy that threatened to beat me up is right now he's actually one of my close friends you have to turn your enemy into your friend like or um, supposed enemy they are not really your enemies most of the time these langas if you understand their history you wouldn't even blame them guess how the history of langas evolved people needed guys to protect their lands for them the families so they hide these young guys with the idea that when they sell the lands they will compensate them but over time and this is something you know a lot of us renege on our promises so these land guys have felt that uh, you are cheating them they can't go to their families and go and what do you call it 
like rub shoulders with them or cause me him there because the families have also told the land they've gotten police protection and things like that so who can they come in and bring their problems to it's you the innocent bystander because they feel it is easier for them to get something from you and when you sit down with them and you know where they are coming from most of them are actually very reasonable i mean sometimes they do things that you question a bit but you realize that most of them feel cheated and so this is like a survival for them it's not like i'm condoning it because i've also been a victim of that right but i always say that when i was beginning to build i was like why don't the land guys like come and support you to even build and you know and also make extra money and things like that but they have a different mindset you have to understand where they are coming from now let's talk about building versus buying a house right which side are you on and why okay so like i mentioned my brother's an architect right he builds for people i also know people who prefer to buy people prefer to buy because litigation land gas and they said like the stress involved you don't want to deal with it so they'll just go for a mortgage others they think buying a house is too expensive so they want to build it bit by bit i cannot say that one is better than the other i think it depends on who you are so for instance you're a young guy coming up and you want a place of your own personally as a young guy i would prefer to build than to buy because as a young guy whatever it is especially a man you have to face the realities of life life is not always going to be fair so if you go and a young guy shakes you small it's part of the growing up uh, process <laughs> you understand me it's part of it because you need to get that experience so that tomorrow when your kids are also grown you can lead them to go and buy land so you need to have that experience when you become comfortable with renting you lose that edge to build and sometimes like you so say maybe i'll build maybe in five years time i'm saving up because hey, this is an interesting thing some people say okay i'm saving up to build so i want to have all the money to build but you know the cost of goods and, uh, and materials right they are not waiting for you they are just going up all the time personally as a young guy growing up i would say you should build now for those that prefer to buy the reason like i said they prefer to buy is that they don't want all that stress in them. unless your salary or your like your mortgage structure everything supports it and you want to buy like fully furnished estates and whatever fine that's also another option but what i've realized is that for most people when they even buy these homes they complain that the quality sometimes it's not like they're looking at the amount of money that they, they're using to purchase it right and it's a long-term commitment mortgage is not, it's also, so basically it's a loan you're paying over a number of years right you have to keep paying 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 what if your taste and preferences change over time what if maybe you were build, buying the house in um Dansuman, but now all of a sudden midway in the mortgage you're like i, I prefer to stay somewhere like Oyarifa. those kind of situations are not comfortable so those who can afford to buy i say yes you should buy if you don't want to deal with the stress those who believe they want to have their own place modify it to their own taste and they are young people that they can take a calculated risk right and get something affordable to start life with i'll see build and no place is far just go get a comfortable place make sure there's no litigation and then you start something over there well um where I, where I used to stay at first, the first time we moved there, I, I was like, ah, this place is very far. This place is very far. Bush everywhere, full of snakes. Mm -hmm. Look, those times when the dormitory was passing, we could hear all the way. Because, and people said we were staying in a brief. Like, and you get to a place like Hacho, sometimes you see only five cars. <laughs> yeah, but now look at Hacho today, right? So th there's no place that's far. Development keeps on happening and happening. So in terms of like, um, like I said, just get some affordable land and then um, start building gradually. But for those who can afford to buy, they should go ahead and buy it. But I will say one thing that those who are buying, make sure you still have to do the same checks and due diligence. One, is the property owned by the seller? Like that area, is it under litigation or anything? What happens in the rainy season in that area? The roads to that area, is it more trouble when it rains? So the same principles apply when you're building a house the same thing applies to buying a house right you have to go to the place in the rainy season you know if it gets flooded you can go see a, a nice beautiful edifice but probably when it rains the place is flooded sometimes even the roof leaks yeah. exactly the roof leaks especially those doing a lot of secret roofing these days no i'm not attacking anyone but a lot of the secret roofings do leak these days because we are trying to cut corners but we don't have the right stuff here don't follow brand name 
Look, even if the real estate company selling you the property is number one in the country, please do due diligence. Exactly. Because there have been issues. There have been stories. People buy houses uh, six months down the line. They still don't have access to their keys. For me, I'm more on the side of people who should take a mortgage, mm -hmm. right, and purchase a house. I feel it makes more economic sense mm -hmm. than building, you know, bit by bit. Especially considering the fact that from 2022 till now the prices of all building materials have almost doubled mm -hmm. right but i don't think that the overall interest rate you are going to pay is a hundred percent for any mortgage because if you extrapolate if it's going to take you 10 years to build we recently did a video on how you can build a house with 2000 cds every month right so i'm going to leave that video in the description below you can check it out after this interview and the projections and calculations we did for a small three-bedroom house on a half plot of land is going to take you about 10 years it will be better to buy the house today mm -hmm. than wait for 10 years okay so good point but where the house is located is there a preferred location two where the house is located right the, the the size of the house you've seen the way they are building these days there's literally no space between the houses and there are no trees yeah but of course you would need to check for all these things exactly. and find a good balance yes because you may not get everything right good. so you find good. Good. something that fits into what you want for e any of them you have to do your due diligence yeah because even i know some people that took a facility and bought a house for three hundred thousand cities at a time but after they moved in they realized that there were cracks in the walls so would you like to take a mortgage and then after that you spending more money fixing the house you understand me? and like like i said right economically it's true looking at the way things price of goods are going up and what have you right it's, it's very very true but then if the building you find meets all your expectations i mean you can go for it if you can also get a mortgage for it i mean that that's fine but if you can't get what you want, the location is a problem for you, or maybe it's just too overpriced, then I suggest you build. And some people, right, maybe like they're staying with their parents as a young um, individual, probably staying with their parents, maybe they're not married yet. Right? I've seen this argument on social media that should you rather build a house or buy a car? Right, and uh, there was this rainy season. And this guy who had built a house was walking in the, and they were like, "You should carry his house to work." <laughs> you know, it's a very, very funny I mean, conversation, right? But it's a very real conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. as well, especially for young people. For me, I, I, I always say that if you are staying like with your parents, you should, you should prioritize building a house over buying a car really but it, it, well if you ask me right did i own a car before i bought a house yeah yeah i owned a car before i bought a house but the car was for business understood but yeah. the thing is let me let me stop you right there i i feel many young people once like they get a job their first thing they purchase is a car their first significant purchase is a car yeah. Yeah, because they feel that transportation system in the country doesn't work. They can, you know, you want to feel comfortable, you know, relax. The sun is hot. You put on the AC. You want to show that they've arrived, you know. Yes. Get the girls and things. Oh, well, like again, I refer to social media where now the girls were complaining that guys always complain that the price of pizza was more than one cement bag. But right now, one cement bag is more than the price of pizza. Look, everybody has a different um, approach to life. It's like when you're cooking jollof, right? Everybody and their strategy, right? But I think that if currently, like you can get a very small car, but you don't need to get a very luxurious car. No, but in today's Ghana, a, a small car is very expensive, right? So let me give you some yeah, yeah, angles. I, know, I, know. I have a colleague at work who wants to purchase his first car. He says he wants a Honda Civic. That's all he wants. I've told him he should try and get an older, let's say, yeah. SUV. But he says no, he wants a 2022, 2021 Honda Civic. And he's been searching from like last year, December till now. The price has been going up every month. Yeah. And currently it's sitting at about almost 150,000 CDs for the Honda Civic. Yeah. And I'm telling him that this 150,000 can do something for your building project. But regardless of what I say, he feels he needs to go for this. There's these two uh, schools of thought, right? Instant gratification and delayed gratification, right? In getting the car, that's instant gratification, right? 
ease of life. You just feel comfortable. You put on the AC, it suits you. But you and I know a car is not all luxury, right? Especially on Ghana roads, right? Anything can happen, right? And, you know, spare parts. I mean, car is really it's not an asset, right? And it's a depreciating yeah, asset. It's also not an asset till, you know. Till it's complete. Exactly. What I'll say is that for your friend, you give him the best advice. Because in having a delayed gratification and putting in that house, if he has land and the land has appreciated, like all this time that he was waiting for the Honda Civic price and all that, he could have used that to buy me some two, three plots of land. The rate at which land appreciates in Ghana is higher than the dollar rises or something, right? So you could sell the lands and then you could get more money. You could do both. It's all about strategy. But if you want to have it now, that's the problem. It's difficult. But here's what I'll say. Like, if you can, your house should be your focus. A friend will tell you that if life hits you hard, you can sleep in a comfortable house. But you can sleep in the car. Okay, so pause it there, right? I feel some of our institutions have also made the system that way and it has kind of, you know, put it in people's minds that the car is where you get first, right? Because most banks in Ghana, most big corporates, after one year, you get access to a car loan. Most of them, most of the big companies. After five to ten years, you get access to mortgage. Do you know why? Why? Because they want you at work. They're like, you know, so the car brings you to work. Like, they are only interested in... So that, that, that leads me to my next point, right? Because for most of the people who are now starting life, they don't have the kind of money to be able to purchase land at her choice, Legon, yeah. and etc. So they'll have to probably go and buy land yeah. at the outskirts. Yeah. The Dodoa and Sawam, yeah. Kaswa things we spoke yeah. about. Regardless of the city, they want to work at the central business district area. Yeah. When you calculate going to build far away and, the and then the transportation, yeah. then sometimes it just makes sense just buy a car and live closer, rent, Good. right? Good. That's true, but it's a balancing act, right? So you want to do two, two things. You want to have a house and you also want to live comfortably. I'm saying sometimes it's better to rent and never to build. Um, I, I struggle with that. Why? I always refer to what people say. He says that, look, you always think 12 months is far till you, st you start renting. <laughs> you know, it comes and you always have to gather this lump sum to go and pay your rent. And mind you, I have done some calculation, right? If you stay in a rented place for 10 years, the money that will be taken from you could have built that place. So actually, any new property built, right? In about 10 years, the owner recoups his total investment. So if you rent for 10 years, the money you'd have paid to landlords it's equivalent to the cost of building that property so you have to have a plan maybe okay i want to have my own place in five years time granted do i qualify for a mortgage now no if i don't qualify for a mortgage now let me do the things i can do that i can be putting up my building in bits so like i said like you have money for foundation you go and do it you can leave the foundation get your car you're moving around. so it's like for lack of a better word sing it, sing it. like you just do it gradually on both ends right so you're still and then you get a small car you don't need to get a comfortable car once the car can take you anywhere and can give you good ac you're good like all the aesthetics the leather interior so they should buy some buy some, some small 1.2 engine yeah 1.5 engine like and like you said go for ghana used in good condition just use that i mean that's for if you're trying to balance your books well like but those who can afford they can just go ahead buy their luxury cars build their luxury homes so from your experience right mm -hmm. today well, how long will it take for an average person coming out of school, first degree? How much will it take and how long will it take for them to build a standard two, three bedroom house? Um, what, what salary are we talking about? What's their take home salary? Today in Ghana, we know that somebody who has completed their first degree has between 2,000 CDs to, let's say... No, let's say 4,000. So, so let's say an average of 5,000. Yes, but you... Let, let, let's know in the comments below yeah. how long you've been working and how much you earn and what sector yeah. you are working in so that we can also gather some data here. Yeah. Okay. But you let's say an average of 5,000. In terms of your transportation and all that, let's say you're able to save about 3,000, well, it's 2,500 a month. So for such a person, and you have to acquire your land and build, probably take you a year to be able to purchase your land. That's if you're even purchasing land far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see, you don't need to 
have all the money. And he's like, when you do your checks and all that, you know, reducing balance, start paying something. Every month, they're going to get something from you. But like, and you, you have to improve your negotiation skills. It's a war front. Anytime you're going to build, you know that you're entering into a war zone, right? And so it took you about a year to pay off the land. Again, like another year to think one more year will be enough to do your foundation and get to learn to level. And then... No, and see if you are putting all your salary in. Basically, like I said, like you're saving like 2000 to 2005 So you're saving about, let's say, 50% of your salary. Okay. Now you think 2500 like, that's 25000 You can't do a foundation. There are different types of foundation that you, you can do. In about three years, three to four years. So if you came out of school, like, in your 23, instead of working at the age of 24, because you did your one-year service, right? 24. By 29, you should have been able to build your first house. Really? 29, 30, you should have been able to build the first it's house. It's possible. It's possible. It's doable. I did it. No, you, you're a shop guy. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but again, it means that you have to put a lot of things aside because you have to you have to be saving about 50% of your salary all the time. And yes, you said the price of goods will be going up, but we also hope your salary will be going up to compensate for that. I believe that if you're doing it the gradual process like four years you should be done it's a painful process it's not funny it will drain a whole lot of take a lot of sacrifice exactly but there's um, fulfillment in having your own place some of these things are not obvious to young people out there like people don't play or oh, having your own house but trust me when you have your own house it gives you a sense of fulfillment in life like you know that oh one of the key things where in life you have been able to accomplish it no matter how small it is it's a huge accomplishment and right then there I mean, and even for the, the bachelors out there, ah, every lady loves a guy who has their own place. You understand? So, and my teacher used to tell me in, in, in JHS, uh, Mr. Monte, when you make their money, the ladies will come. So, and not like the ladies have time, money. ladies want comfort. Even you, you want comfort. So, make life comfortable. You don't want to stress that I don't, the landlord will be knocking you. Don't like, hey, my money. Like, I just read the WhatsApp message. The landlord sent the tenant, hey, hello, how are you doing? The instant the, the tenant replied, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, you know, it's 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 all this back and forth. So delayed gratification. Put it in mind, it's gonna take you about four years, especially if you're looking at this type of salaries, right? That you're not on the very high end, but just on like just above the low end, right? It's gonna take you about four years because you have to acquire your land. And I will even say that those in the university who are take who are able to take summer jobs and what have you, save some of that money and use it to start acquiring some of the land because at least if you start the negotiation early the price won't change whilst you pay some you understand exactly so you shouldn't wait and say oh let me come out of university when i get a job no as students you and i know you waste a lot of money on unnecessary things just be saving the little you can save no matter how far the place is just acquire it and gradually you'll be able to get there if you look at how long the journey is going to take you will never start but you just have to take the first and there's something i realized about building i don't know if it's spiritual and i'm not the best person to speak on this but anytime you are focused on building even though you lose a bit of weight when you are building no matter no matter how much money you have you lose a bit of weight when you are building but certain doors begin to open like i don't know like you didn't plan for some money from somewhere but it will just come because you are trying to put all your resources into putting out building. now people can say I'm, I'm being superstitious but i've seen this a couple of times like anytime you're trying to build there's like some force that's just pushing you through gradually so you don't know where it will come from but I, I don't know i don't have any explanation for this but i've seen this i'm sure your viewers can relate some of them can relate if you can relate you know comment below and let us know sure you also mentioned that um in 20 17 you started building right yeah, yeah, yeah tell us about how that process went some of the lessons you learned the mistakes you made along the way what you know now that you wished you knew before starting your first house okay this will come as a surprise to a lot of your viewers because i said my brother is an architect first thing first always bring your architect to site before you start anything that was probably my biggest mistake you know i was a technical person so i just felt i didn't even need an architect you can do it yourself yes that I can do it myself spirit. And it's, it's in a lot of us men. I can do it myself. But that part leads to a lot of losses, you know. Because every land is different. The topography and all that is different. The slopes. And some of, if you use the local, like our guys on the Mason and all that, they don't, know, they don't understand slopes. They don't know how to treat slopes. So that's what I'm talking for architects here. Always bring an architect to the site, like the very first time. Don't just pick a plan from somewhere 
and say, I want something like this. No, bring the architect to the site and tell him, you know, based on this, do something that will fit the topography of the land. So that was the first mistake I did, right? So in my case, like, my brother drew the plan for me, but he hadn't seen the site. And the foreman I gave the plan to, where he should have placed the building, he placed the building in a part that it made the rest of the land, like, not like useless, but too much work would be involved. So again, where you place the building on the land is very important. These are some of the things we take for granted. Or how the layout, how the building is placed on the land is very important. And that is why when you get your architect to come to the site and design it, at least the initial um, stages, he has to come there when they are doing the plotting. It's very, very important. Never say your architect is too expensive. Another thing that we've seen, right? People really don't want to work with architects. Yeah, because... They feel it's... No, I've seen this house, Charlie. Yeah. I get a four man. Let's build this house. Yeah. I'll tell you where it's coming from, right? They've seen their great great grandfathers build houses without architects. They've seen it happen several times. So they're like, oh, why do I now need an architect, right? But what they seem to forget is that in those times, right, the land, the land was actually very big. You know, they were cutting the land 100 by 100, and some of them were on acres, right? But now we are maximizing the land space. And it's not always that you should go for a full plot of land. That's another thing. Half plot of land, but you can get an architect to give you a design. Exactly. I'll tell you my experience in Spain. And this place, anyone that's listening to you from Spain, they can go there. Auto Real, right? Um, Auto Real is in Murcia. It's a bunch, like it's an estate. And we were living on a plot of land that was quarter plot. But it's a five bedroom apartment. On a quarter plot, there was space enough for two cars. And the backyard was huge and we still had a place for a swimming pool all on a quarter plot of land you don't need a full plot of land yes. you can maximize the space okay you can maximize the space and that is why you have to get an architect and tell them look this is when you and, and look even if you don't if your architect doesn't know what to design go to pinterest sorry look for the designs that you want and then show it to him that like, oh, can you design something like this for me i right? maximize the space because again you talked about a young guy coming out from the university right he has friends so four guys can come together or even three guys can come together and say oh let's buy one plot of land and let's split it into three parts which is even a bit bigger than the quarter plot and they could maximize it or two people can combine buy a full plot and, and this one i found out later the dimensions on the building plan sometimes do not match the dimensions on the ground when the, these masons are building it. So again, that is why your it is important for the architect. For exactly. Because some of these guys who claim they are experienced for men or what have you, they use their own discretion and they add uh, some inches, some feet. And before I realize you were planning to build something small, but the actual building is way bigger than what you had planned leading to more costs. But you know, your architect will give it to your quantity surveyor who will do the bill of materials for you. And in doing your bill of materials, you know the total cost of the building. So imagine you've planned that in mind. But then the actual implementation, because when your architect comes to site, you pay him something small, the mason, the experienced mason will use his own discretion and he will now let you incur extra 10,000 CDs cost or extra 20,000 CDs cost, which you hadn't budgeted for. And one thing I learned the hard way was that any cost you want to cut in real estate, you, you bear that cost in multiples. So for instance, I don't want the architect to come to site or just give me a plan. But when you come to site, I have to give you money. Maybe I have to give some 500 CDs. You end up spending maybe 5,000 extra because of the 500 you failed to, to pay. You understand? So anytime you try to cut corners, like you're trying to put up like a building, um, the iron rods, you want to use like inferior iron rods or you don't want to use 16 mm, you're trying to put up a story building and you're trying to like cut the corners, all that, like you recently heard about all the buildings that collapsed, right? Cutting costs cost multiples of the cost you're trying to cut. That's deep. Cutting so costs cost costs multiples of the cost you're trying to cut. From your experience, what's the most painful part when it comes to building? The finishing. the finishing. What I've realized is that the cost of finishing a house is more than the cost of building the structure of the house. Like, you know, block work is the cheapest. Yeah, and it can even be completed faster. Oh, yes. We need three days that they are lentil level and all that. But finishing the plastering. And this thing about finishing a house, there are two sides of the story. One is that the intent of the masons to make sure they recoup their, or whatever they've lost out from the laying of the blocks. So again, they delay the process. They to tell you that, oh, plastering, they have to do it well. And if they don't do it well, and then they end up wasting 
a lot of your time, a lot of your cement as well. So that part, there's, there's, a, there's a dicey area there, right? Some of it is intentional. But actually, too, the cost involved in the finishing, like it's like towels are more expensive, your fittings and fixtures. So you could use, let's say, um, 150000 to put up a whole house without plastering, with your roofing and everything. But it will cost you about an extra 200000 which is more than the one fifty, to finish the house, to make it livable, right? And I realize that people do not factor that finishing part in their calculations. Normally, when they are calculating, they ask the missing, oh, so how much do we need to put up the foundation? They give you a fixed cost. Oh, to raise, to roof. So normally, it's up to a roofing level. But you can't live in it. Yeah, you can't live in it. And now it comes to your screening. Oh, Charlie. That, that part is just, I have always questioned the whole concept. Like, why can't you just lay all the electricals and when you do the concrete once and for all? And when you start talking, they say, ah, no, you, since your money is getting finished, that's why you're talking. But that's one thing I've realized that the finishing actually costs more than the entire building. And something people should put in mind. So I know a lot of our ladies, you know, when it comes to the finishing, they want to put in a lot of inputs, especially with the kitchen aspect. I know a friend whose kitchen alone costs over 100000 But you go into the kitchen, you don't see the 100000 on the wall. It's difficult to, like, comprehend. So again, know who you are and then bear in mind that whatever you are spending on your building for finishing, you spend about 150 or 150% of that on just the finishing or sometimes even twice. When you're asking your quantity survey or your architect who is doing your build of materials for you let them put the cost of finishing together as well it will give you a very good sense how much you need to finish the project and another thing that uh, another strategy is that don't take when you finish building the house don't, when you finish building the house don't take like i want to do like all the tiling at once like what a friend of mine does is that you focus on one room finish it up then you move to the next room so normally they'll do one room then they'll do a kitchen and then they'll do the bathroom one room a kitchen and bathroom hall oh, your place not completed no one's going to visit you anytime soon all right so now you can move in yeah you can move in once you have one room one bedroom the kitchen and then the the bathroom or bathroom and toilet is done, you can move there and be comfortable. You understand? Then after that, you start putting the rest together. So it's all about uh, strategy. All right. So if you are getting value from this video, like and also share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below so that it can be helpful to mm. other people. And if you are wondering, can I build? Well, we did this video over here. So click on this link where we show you how you can build with 2000 CDs every month. Thanks, Bibri.